Okay, C. Lindelof videos. Using the distance formula today, finding a missing value. Um, I'm chasing bank, bro. This is for you. So here's another one. Remember that the distance formula is the square root of the first x value minus the first x value squared plus the second y value minus the first y value squared. Um, what's really important here is that remember, it doesn't matter what order you put x and y in. So it doesn't matter if this is the first or the second. People get all turned around about that stuff. This is actually going to be really straightforward for you guys. So here we go. Just not to waste too much time. So it says, find the missing value x of x if the points 7, 5 and x negative 3 have a distance of 10. So all I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take what I know. Here's the distance formula. And we know here that the distance is 10. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to be like, all right, I got this. 10 equals the square root. And then I'm going to start filling in stuff. Right? I have the first x value i don't know right i'm going to call this the first x value. i'm just going to call it x so it's x the second value x value i do know which is minus seven right it's minus seven because i put a plus seven in to, and the formula was negative right so i put a positive in and a positive times a negative is a negative so that's why that ended up that way squared plus i'm just using the formula again negative three because we have a y value of negative three and positive 5, when I put the positive 5 and I get a negative 5, right? Quantity squared. Stem this out. Now I'm just going to clean this up a little bit if you don't mind. It's going to get 10 is equal to the square root of x minus 7 squared. Then look, negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. And negative 8, right? Negative 8 squared equals positive 64. So that's where that's coming from, positive 64 here, right? There's a bunch of steps I could have done, but I just want to keep it really straightforward for you guys. So the next thing I'm going to do, and this is the part that sucks, and I get it, is this. I'm going to expand this piece off right here. So I'm going to take this piece right here, and I'm going to do FOIL, right? I'm going to FOIL this out. If I FOIL this out, I'm going to get x squared minus 14x plus 49, right? So all I did was I had this x minus 7, and I'm going to FOIL it out. In a minute, I'm going to use, um, we're going to start doing stuff like some quadratic jump, but it's not going to be difficult, so hang in there with me. So I'm going to go back and rewrite the problem. Instead of writing x minus 7, I'm going to write it in its expanded form, which is x squared minus 14x plus 49. But remember, we have this positive 64 at the end, right? So here's this plus 64. And then somebody else just went, oh my God, let it up. This is looking like crap. Dude, it's going to be fine. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. If you don't mind, I'm going to expand this out over here. We'll get 10 is equal to the square root of x squared minus 14x plus 49 plus 64, which I believe is 113. So positive 113. So I'm just going to be like, Lindelof, where did you get that 113? When I expanded x minus 7 squared, the C value of that quadratic was 49. I added it to my 64, and that's where the 113 came from, right? All right, this is what actually starts to get good. So, so somebody please tell me that you're happy because it's about to get good. I'm going to square this, right? I'm going to get rid of the square root by squaring it, right? If you square a square root, it cancels the square root, right? We know that square roots are rational exponents. So I squared one side, I have to square the other side. So far, so good, I hope. 10 squared is 100 equals the square root got squared. So the square root and the squared just go away magically. Poof. Minus 14x. I'm just copying this crap again, right? 113. So here's where everybody goes sideways. Like, what are you doing now? So if you remember, when, when you put a quadratic into standard form, it's ax squared plus bx plus c, well, this is a plus, plus c equals zero. Well, this is almost in that form, right? I just have 100 here. So I'm just going to get rid of this joint right here. So I'm going to take out 100. 100. Take out 100. 100. Zero. Oh, my gosh. It's this zero. We're getting this in standard form. x squared minus 14x. 113 minus 100 is 13. So here's my 13. So far, so far, it looks beautiful. I mean, I just couldn't be happier. I'm just ecstatic. 
I'm going to rewrite this just to make it in pretty form. x squared minus 14x plus 13 equals 0. Success, right? So obviously this is not the answer, but we can foil that when we can factor this out into two binomials, right? So we look at this two numbers that when I multiply them, I get positive 13, but when I add them, I get negative 14. So those two numbers are are negative one, I believe, and negative 13, right? I'm just going to check this out. Negative one times negative 13 is this positive 13. Negative one plus negative 13 is this negative 14. Victory is ours. This is this, right? So check me out here. I'm going to solve using zero product property. When it, or when are these two things, uh, these two things multiplied to give us zero? Well, if x was one, so x is one, or x is 13. And if you want to go back and test, you can go back and test this, right? Put this value in, right where are we put this value in right here put the one in here put or and put the 13 in and see which one makes it true maybe they both do but that's where we are i hope this was helpful i tried to keep it short because nobody's going to watch a video with me for more than 70 minutes or so so thanks for watching if you have questions or comments let me know